I call the honourable member, Dr. Russell Norman. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Um, I rise to speak on this urgent debate around um, Justice Neeser's report into the unlawful activities of the GCSB, the Government Communications Security Bureau. In this instance, the Prime Minister has been very relaxed about the civil liberties and freedoms of ordinary New Zealanders. What we have seen is a Prime Minister who is so relaxed and comfortable that he hasn't done his job, which is to protect the democratic rights and the rights to privacy of ordinary New Zealand citizens and residents. What this case shows is that the Prime Minister, who is the sole person who has the responsibility, the democratic responsibility, to protect us from the GCSB, has not, has not done his job. The Attorney General um, gave a speech before where I believe he fundamentally gave the wrong impression about the relationship between the Minister overseeing the GCSB and the GCSB, because this relationship is unique within all of the public agencies. The clauses that are in the GCSB Act, Clause 8.3, only appears in two Acts. It appears in the Act governing the GCSB and the Act governing the, the SAS. And it says the performance of the, of the Bureau's functions is subject to the control of the Minister. There are no other Acts where the ministerial control is so direct than in these two Acts. And the reason for that is that there is no other democratic oversight of this organisation. There is no way for Parliament to inquire into the operations of this organisation because there is no parliamentary select committee that can inquire into them. There is an Intelligence and Security Committee, which is a statutory body, not a parliamentary body. It is not allowed to inquire into the operational matters with regard to the GCSB or the SIS. The Official Information Act is effectively useless when it comes to these organisations because they always have a strong case to deny the information that you're seeking under national security grounds. So effectively, these organisations operate in secret except for the oversight of the Prime Minister. That is the only person who has that oversight. And he has manifestly failed to do his job in this case. The Attorney General also tried to make a comparison with, say, for example, the police or the Crown Law Office in saying you wouldn't want the Minister to get involved in individual cases. But there is a world of difference in the way these organisations work. If the police are seeking a warrant, they go to a judge and a member of the judiciary has to approve that warrant. If the Government Communications Security Bureau, Bureau seeks an interception warrant, it goes to its minister. So the minister overseeing the GCSB has to sign off every interception warrant that the GCSB does if they want to put equipment in place. So the prime minister knows the individuals who are being targeted from, for every warrant. So it's not like the Minister of Police doesn't know all the people that are being targeted by the police um, in terms of all their interception warrants, but the Prime Minister, the Minister responsible for the GCSB, knows every person that is being targeted by an interception warrant by the GCSB because the Prime Minister has to sign off every warrant. Likewise, he has to sign off every um, authorisation or warrant to intercept or, or put equipment on a computer. So if the GCSB wants to get into your computer system, System, the Prime Minister has to sign it off and he knows your name. So if you are the subject of one of these warrants, the Prime Minister knows your name because the Prime Minister is required to sign off the warrant. It is manifestly different to the police. And the reason it is manifestly, manifestly different is because there is no judicial oversight. The only oversight is the Prime Minister. And that's why the Act gives the Prime Minister much more intrusive powers into the operation of the GCSB than it gives the Minister of Police, for example, into the operational matters of the police. Because there is no one else that is serving that role of making sure that this agency is operating in, on behalf of New Zealand's national interests. There is a third category of intervention or interception which the GCSB can do, which is when they're targeting foreign, uh, foreign nationals and they want to intercept their communications, but it doesn't require a bug or any of those kinds of equipment, the GCSB can do that without getting anything signed off by the Minister. And that was the case with the Kim.com case. 
That does not mean that the Prime Minister can wash his hands of it. That does not mean the Prime Minister can stand up in the House and go, oh, well, it's got nothing to do with me. I've got no responsibility in that respect. The Prime Minister has total responsibility. In the third category of cases under the GCSB Act, where the GCSB is intercepting communications, usually mobile phones or that kind of thing, where they don't need to put in place special equipment and hence they don't need a warrant signed by the Minister, it does not mean the Minister has no responsibility to make sure that the GCSB is operating lawfully. Because there is no one else. So the only other person, and this is an interesting, this is interesting, the only other person who has a responsibility in this respect, of course, is the Inspector General of Intelligence and Security, who must be a retired High Court judge. In fact, the Inspector, which then brings us to the second point I'd like to make, which is around the role of the Inspector General. This report today on the unlawful activity of the GCSB was done by the Inspector General of Intelligence and Security. I would draw people's attention to the annual report of the Inspector General from 2011, where the Inspector General says, in particular, the Inspector General of Intelligence and Security assists the Minister to ensure that the activities of an agency, the GCSB and the SAS, comply with the law. So the Inspector General has a hands-on operational function to make sure that the GCSB and the SIS comply with the law. Now what we know, because the government has admitted it, is that in this instance the GCSB did not comply with the law. So who bears the responsibility? It is the director of the GCSB, primary responsibility for acting unlawfully. But it is also the minister who did nothing, who did not make sure that the GCSB operated lawfully. But it is also the inspector general themselves who, in their own words, assists the minister to ensure that the agency complies with the law. So the Inspector General himself, Mr Neeser, has identified in his own report that he is implicated in the unlawful activities of the GCSB because he did not prevent the GCSB from operating unlawfully. So given that, you have to ask yourself, is the Inspector General the right person to inquire into the activities of the Inspector General and the GCSB? The answer can only be no. You cannot have the person who is responsible... Uh, sorry, Mr Speaker. You, uh, we cannot have the person who is responsible for ensuring that the um, GCSB operates, uh, complies with the law being the person who also investigates whether the Inspector General did his job. What did it say in the uh, Inspector General's report that was released today about the Inspector General's role? It said nothing. It didn't say whether he did his job. He didn't mention his role at all. But of course it is his job, according to his own report, to make sure that the GCSB follows the law. <coughs> Mr Speaker, that's why the Minister did the wrong thing, the Prime Minister did the wrong thing when he appointed the Inspector General to run the inquiry. We needed an independent person to run the inquiry who does not have a conflict of interest in this case. We did not need the Inspector General to run this inquiry. We needed somebody who was independent of the process to run the inquiry. This is a fundamental, fundamental principle in a democracy. If we are to have spying agencies who operate in secret, who are otherwise not accountable to Parliament or the people, whose sole point of accountability to the democratic system is through the Prime Minister, then we need a Prime Minister who is applying themselves to controlling the activities of this agency to make sure they are operating lawfully. And we do not have such a Prime Minister. We have a missing in action Prime Minister. We have a Prime Minister who is relaxed about our civil liberties, who does, does not care about the civil liberties of ordinary New Zealanders who get spied on by the GCSB. Because remember, even when the GCSB is operating lawfully, they can, they can intercept telephone calls between foreign nationals and New Zealand citizens and residents. They're just not supposed to use the ones on the side of the New Zealand residents and, um, and citizens. So we have an agency that has the right to spy 
spy on all of us. And the only point of accountability is the Prime Minister. And he says it's not up to him. It's not his job. Well, I've got news for the Prime Minister. It is his job. The job of the Prime Minister is to protect our civil liberties in the case of the spy agencies whose sole point of democratic accountability is to the Prime Minister of New Zealand. And he sits here day after day in this House and tells us it has nothing to do with him. Well, it has everything to do with him and he should front up and apologise to the people of New Zealand. Mr Speaker. 